Hey folks, Matthew Weiss here, WeissAdvice.com and Weiss Advice here on YouTube. In this video, I want to talk about a really, really cool widening technique. It's one that's not talked about very often, but it's very useful and very powerful. And that technique is comb filtering. So I'm going to play an example of that. I'm going to play this down and in real time, I'm going to turn a comb filter on and off and you're going to hear the record get a lot bigger and then contract and get bigger and contract. It's going to widen out. After I do that, I'm going to explain what comb filtering is and then demonstrate it a little bit more in depth. Let's check it out. Tell me are you satisfied with the way this ended? I bet you feel nice. Think about me driving down the 405 with your new boyfriend. I hope he treats you right. I think that's pretty obvious to hear. It's not exactly a subtle difference. Uh, before jumping into the explanation, I want to just say that the artist's name is Guess, and this song is called Plastic. It is out and released, so if you want to check out that song, I definitely suggest it. So what is comb filtering? All right, well, comb filtering can kind of be explained in the name, actually. We know what a filter is. A filter is when you cut out a piece of frequency content, whether it's a high pass where you're cutting out low frequency or a low pass where you're cutting out high frequency or a band pass where you are cutting out high and low. Well, this is kind of a unique style of filter in the sense that it's cutting out bits of frequency in a mathematical pattern that kind of resembles a comb. So if we think of this as our frequency spectrum, we can think of a comb filter as getting in here and then pulling this stuff out and leaving holes in between. Actually, a really good visual display would be from the Waves PS22 split here. And we can see it. I don't I don't necessarily love this plugin, although it is useful, it works. Uh, but we can see here how this frequency line is cutting out frequency. And then in this particular case, what we're doing with the comb filter is we're taking those chunks of frequency and we're panning them off to one side and then panning the remainder off to the other side. So it's kind of like we're grabbing chunks of frequency and splitting them apart. So I'm gonna jump in here. I'm going to solo up the vocal and we're going to hear this in real time with my mix knob all the way up. So our vocal here originally sounds like this. Tell me are you satisfied with the way this ended? I bet you feel nice. Sounds good, right? Now let's throw on the comb filter. So right here, this is going to be our bass frequency and we are going to be taking chunks at intervals of 193 Hertz. So that is, that is how we've set this comb filter up here. All right. Tell me, are you satisfied with the way this ended? I bet you feel nice. So not subtle, right? It really sounds like we've kind of created this ghostly hollow image where the inconsistent bits of frequency are left and right. And what ends up happening is we kind of, our brain sort of sums its center but knows it's wide and it creates this big sound but ghostly sound and spread sound and ambient sound and it's very interesting right it's a very cool widening technique definitely changes the tonality in a certain way because it creates this ghostly hollow effect but things get really interesting when we fold to mono most stereo effects do not sound good in mono i'm going to pull up a hostile for example a hostile is when you take one side, the left or the right side, for your stereo output, and you just delay that one side ever so slightly. And it would sound like this. Tell me, are you satisfied with the way this ended? I bet you feel nice. Think about me trying. And in a way, it almost kind of sounds like our vocal is kind of coming from the left. I'm going to see if I can set it in a way where it sounds stereo. Tell me, are you satisfied with the way this ends? 
There we go. So now I've set it in a way where we hear it coming from both directions, although it is left leaning. We also hear it coming from the right. Now, the benefit of this is that we don't lose the integrity of the sound. If we were to mute the right channel, the left side would sound completely normal and unchanged. But here's where this has an issue. If I fold to mono and play this. Tell me are you satisfied with the way this ends? Sounds really weird, right? It almost sounds like speaking through a fan. Check out what happens when I turn on the comb filter with this summed mono. Here's before. Tell me are you satisfied with the way this ended? I bet you feel nice. Here's after. Tell me are you satisfied with the way this ended? I bet you feel nice is a remarkably good mono sum for something that is so distinctly stereo spread. I'm not sure I can actually think of better, although, you know, if you can, jump into the comment section below because there are a lot of widening techniques. This one just happens to be kind of cool. Now, does it sound exactly the same? No. If you squint one ear and tilt your head, you can kind of hear that there's a very slight timbral change. Uh, what I'll do is I'll bring in a null test where we just have the original one uh, without the comb filtering on and flipped here. We've got uh, this, the face flipped. So if these were exactly the same, we wouldn't hear anything. Right, nothing. Now I'm going to bring in the comb filtering. We can hear a little bit of something kind of mid-rangey, kind of like a tin can-ish sort of sound. So there is a slight timbral change, but it's pretty darn subtle. So I, I think that does a pretty good job of creating a stereo spread. Now, I like the kilohertz one not only because I can really fine-tune the actual rate of uh, bands, and where the bass frequency is, but also it just comes with a mix knob, which is really handy. So let's say that I want this vocal not necessarily to be wide, but a lot of the times I like a vocal to kind of bow out from the center a little bit, so there's a little bit of spread on it, and I think that's pretty common in pop production. Having this mix knob and having such good mono compatibility allows me to put a little bit of spread onto something like a vocal. Tell me are you satisfied with the way this ended? I bet you feel nice. Think about me driving. Oh, I'm still in mono. That's why I'm not hearing anything. Okay. Tell me are you satisfied with the way this ended? I bet you feel nice. Think about me driving down the floor. There we go. Just like a little bit of subtle spread going on, kind of like like a like a chorusing effect that's kind of just subtly in there or something like that, but in a very very smooth ambient way. Really really nice. This can work great on things that are like ambient pads. So for example, this has a little bit of stereo spread to it, but we can exaggerate it. That sounds magic. That's That works so well on those kinds of like pads and things like that. Uh, or even bass, actually. You know, if, if you've seen some of my low-end videos, you know that I'm not afraid of stereo bass. I like it. So here's an example of where comb filtering can sound pretty good on bass. That's all the way up, and it sounds pretty cool. All right, now, there are a lot of different stereo widening techniques, and I do want to say that the best one and a good starting place is usually just a really good panning scheme, meaning where we're placing things left to right in the mix. If you want things to be wider, if you want a wider mix, generally speaking, the best way to do it is organically through using elements that are either naturally wide or simply by panning things off to the left or the right to create width. 
Now, where we might want to use something like comb filtering as opposed to organic panning is when we want something to be kind of equally weighted on the left and right. We don't necessarily want it to be left or right. We want it to be in the middle or equally balanced, but just kind of spread out. Comb filtering is a really good way of doing that because it kind of evenly balances the energy on the left and right side as it's spreading things out in both directions. So good places for that will be pads, like I demonstrated a moment ago, or um, if you have a reverb on a vocal, for example, that could be really cool just to make your reverb super, super wide. Let me see if I can figure out where my reverb print is. Yeah, here we go. So here's our reverb print. Now this is already pretty wide, so I mean, we might not need to widen this, but let's say we wanted to, a comb filter could really take this and like create an out of speaker experience. So it's pushing the reverb so far out in the stereo field, it almost creates this sense that the sound is wider than the speakers actually account for. So that can be a really cool effect using a comb filter as well. It can work on delays. It can work on really anything. Okay, so I think here's a good place to wrap up this video. If you dig this video, hit that like button. If you want to catch more videos like this, hit subscribe with the bell notification. If you have a favorite stereo widening technique, drop it in the comments section below. I'd love to hear how you like to widen things out. And lastly, you know what we... Ah, here we go. You know what we say here at Weiss Advice. We are musicians. Sound is our instrument. And I will catch you next time.